Welcome to the Confessions of a Group X Instructor Podcast. For group exercise junkies and enthusiastic classgoers, we'll explore and uncover authentic, thought-provoking, and heartwarming industry education and inspiration from entertaining, badass fitness pros. And now your host, creator of Warrior Rhythm, Warrior Strength, Warrior Combat, Warrior Revolution, and Warrior Kids Group Fitness Brands, Ellen DeWord. Here we grow. Hey, everybody. I'm tuning in to talk to you from Puerto Vallarta today. I am on a Fit Bodies trip with my daughter in Mexico, and um, I wanted to podcast to you from like a beautiful backdrop like I did on my last Fit Bodies trip in the Dominican Republic, Um, but I couldn't because this resort was affected by the recent hurricanes just last week. And there's actually been quite a bit of water damage. And so they're doing massive construction and there's like jackhammers going from like the morning until the evening. There's just a lot of noise out there. Um, So I decided to record from the hotel room. So here we are. My daughter is down by the ocean and reading and stuff like that. She and I have really similar interests, um, art and reading and fitness and like relaxation, (laughs) sleep, that kind of thing, food, healthy food. So we're just chilling and we brought books, we brought art supplies and that's about it. A lot of fitness clothes. I haven't had anyone in class yet this week. That's different for my fit body's experience. But again, I do think it's related to um, the time of year and this uh, this this crazy um, hurricane rain situation. So it's been we're enjoying ourselves, and there's thunderstorms every night and lightning, which I'm a I'm a big fan of. I think they're beautiful and humbling and kind of like, kind of like the ocean is makes you feel small, uh, but also part of a bigger picture, you know? Okay. Let's dive in today. I want to talk to you about the beach body bomb drop. And I haven't even processed all my thoughts and feelings. Cause I just found out yesterday about it, but I wanted to share my thoughts and feelings with you. And this, it's going to get a little bit personal. I actually texted my husband prior to hitting record today, asking if I had his permission to share some things about our life. Uh, I, I'm actually, believe it or not, for as public as I am, I am actually pretty private about personal things. I don't know if you have noticed that about me, but I um, tend to keep family stuff off of social. So that's just my personal choice. So let's see. For those of you that might not have heard the news, a beach body body um, announced that they are doing away with the network marketing model of their business and switching November 1st to an affiliate um, business model. Affiliate, like you get a commission, um, kind of like I have with Frey Skincare. I'm an affiliate. I'm affiliate. So it's this amazing skincare company for female athletes. Like that's the target demo for that company. It's vegan. It's a vegan company and they um, make amazing skincare for women that like to do high intensity exercise and sweat a lot. (laughs) They're like right up my alley. I love their products Um, and I'm an affiliate. So I make a little commission if someone uses my link and buys those skincare products. And so basically Beachbody is um, converting to that kind of a model and uh, as, as network marketing goes, they basically the, 
how do I say this? The promise of wealth, the opportunity for wealth is really in building a team and benefiting off of their ability to grow, sell, and recruit. So you create this, what, 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 the Team Beachbody Network referred to as team volume and quote unquote cycle bonuses. And there was a point points associated with all the things that they w- would sell, you know, their online workouts, the, all the supplements. Um, and, um, and so as your quote unquote downline, the people underneath your business center, as that grew, so would the points underneath you and so would your bonuses. And so that's really where the money kind of came from, comes from in a, in a, in a business, in a, in a uh, model like that. And, you know, there's tons and tons of network marketing companies out there. I'm going to, on this episode, talk about how I feel about network marketing. I'm going to talk about, um, my personal experience uh, and how how Beachbody has impacted my life in pretty profound ways. Um, so I got a text yesterday and it was from a friend asking me how I was doing with the news. And I was like, what news? (laughs) First of all, I'm in Mexico. I'm pretty unplugged. And also I'm not really involved with, with uh, Beachbody in that way anymore, which I'm going to get to. So I'm not like, I'm not like reading their emails and not checking their Facebook groups. And I'm not, I'm not in the know by design, by choice. So So I didn't know what she meant. And um, then when she explained what was going on, um, my emotions were instantly mixed. I felt gratitude upon hearing the news, which I'll explain because that might seem like a weird, that was actually my very first feeling that bubbled up in my chest was gratitude. Again, I need to, I need to qualify that because this news was incredibly devastating for people. So give me a chance to explain. <laughs> um, first emotion was gratitude. And and then also like right on its heels, I felt disappointment about it because it will negatively affect me. Um, and then a second later, I got hit with a wave of compassion and sadness for friends and uh acquaintances and just people in that network that I know that I know are going to be devastated, devastated, like financially devastated by this announcement. And then the fourth announcement that washed over me was guilt because I brought a lot of people into this company and recruited a lot of, we call them coaches into my organization. And some of them are still working really hard at, at, you know, building businesses. And I felt guilty. Like, what did I bring them into? They trusted me. And here they just got this email that the business is going away. So first I felt gratitude. Then I felt, uh, disappointment and a little bit of fear about, oh boy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be losing some money. <laughs> and then I felt um, compassion and sadness for other Beachbody coaches. And then I felt guilt for bringing people in. So I'm going to say that with network marketing, what a lot of people refer to derogatorily as a pyramid scheme. Pyramid schemes are actually illegal. So I would say that Beachbody was not a pyramid scheme because it was legal, but barely. <laughs> like, um, no shade. Just like, it, it's a way to work around it being a pyramid scheme. And um, so network marketing is like, Uh, the 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 real wealth is really in like the top one or two percent of 
quote unquote coaches. I'm going to use the word coaches because that's what Beachbody called them, but other organizations call them other, other companies or other call them other things. So let me put my hair up there. That's cute. Okay. Um, so the real wealth is in the top, top, like one or 2%. I was never quite there, although I did well. I was never quite there. Uh, there, someone once referred to it as a hockey stick. And think about the shape of a hockey stick. Okay, laying on the floor, let's pretend. And the nape of the hockey stick, the nape of the neck, the nape of the neck of the hockey stick where it curves up real quick. I'm sure there's a word for that part of the hockey stick, but but the part that hits the puck, <laughs> there's that nape of the neck into the part that hits the puck. That is a nice picture of network marketing and where the wealth lies. So it took all these coaches that were like signing up for their discount on products and, you know, signing up under the, you know, promise of, you know, being able to receive wealth. And I know there's rules about income claims and stuff that Beachbody was diligent about policing and stuff like that. But there is, there is promise of wealth. I mean, that's how people come in and why. And it's really, 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 really rare. It's really unusual. And it's usually with those founding coaches, those initial people that enroll when a company starts. And by the way, I wish I knew, I wish I could remember where I heard this, but I did hear years ago that there is a, that there is a lifespan for, for MLMs multi-level marketing that stands for. And it, I, I'm almost positive they said 12 years. It might've been 14, but that there is statistically a lifespan and they cannot, they cannot, they cannot be successful for longer than that. Like the pool runs dry. Like they, it basically, they can't survive. They just, they can't survive that. Oh, I wish I could remember the source. Uh, I remember that it was a credible source. Does that matter to you? <laughs> but anyway, um, all right. So now let me talk to you about like kind of my story with that whole coaching network. And some of you might be confused because Beachbody also had Beachbody Live division, which I was a master trainer for and an instructor for and a conference presenter for and all that stuff. So um, let me just kind of start at the beginning <laughs> Hence me texting my husband asking if I could share some private details of our life. And I'm not going to share very many. I'm just going to say that there was, I'm going to say that I married an addict and an alcoholic. And I, I mean, I knew when we got married that, um, he was a recovering addict. Um, and there was some, what I didn't know is that it was a problem, not alcoholism, but uh, prescription medication. This was all things prescribed by a pain management specialist. Can you, I mean, literally a pain management specialist kept my husband addicted for years to something that you shouldn't be using for more than six weeks. A doctor continued to prescribe it. So that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother topic. So it basically ruined our marriage and, um, all but ruined our marriage. And I, there, so there was a season where our marriage was tanking. I mean, it was going down in flames so fast. I mean, I had my mom come out to Oregon and, like I filled out divorce papers on my kitchen floor while she was there. And I was, that's how close we were to ending. I was to ending the marriage because of the, because of 
well, because of the addiction and the other things that go that other things that went along with that. And I'm going to leave it at that. That's all you need to know. But it's an important piece of context because first of all, I don't know why I'm this way. I don't know why God made me this way. And I I don't think it's good or bad. I actually think it is both both good and bad, but I am like obsessively all or nothing with things in my life. I could give you dozens and dozens of examples um, to name some that you might be more aware of or interested in. Uh, One would be my eating disorder. Like that takes extreme obsessive compulsiveness to be able to basically starve yourself almost to death for years. Um, That was an all or nothing behavior that was obviously terrible. I've had some all or nothing behaviors that are um, great in my life. Getting tattooed wrist to ankle is definitely an all or nothing behavior. Um, I'm very all or nothing with relationships. Um, And um. I was all or nothing with Team Beachbody. And it was because I had no job. um, Skills. Really. And my marriage was falling apart. And I had three little kids. So... It was not only my all or nothing personality, but it was also like, I was like a wild animal and I felt like I needed to take care of my kids. Like, you know, like a wild animal protecting their, their young. I was like, I'm getting divorced. I have three little kids and oh my gosh, there's so much music coming from the pool. Um, I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it. So it was, all I can say is I entered into the team beach body coaching opportunity with like a wild animal, reckless, abandoned ferocity. And I was, I needed to win. I'm also competitive, very, which is good and bad in my life (laughs) also. And I just, I needed, I needed, I needed it to work because I needed to be able to provide for my kids. And it's so weird because one more personal detail, and then let's get into the heart of this thing. I aspired as a young woman to be like the stay home mom that cooked and cleaned and homeschooled her children. I was, that was my life goals is to be stay-at-home mom, group fitness instructor, (laughs) homeschool, and cook and clean all day, which is so funny because now I like love entrepreneurship. I love working. I don't like cooking or cleaning. (laughs) Come to find out, come to find out not so much. I did I did for a season of my life and I did homeschool for a season of my life and all that stuff, but this actually flipped a switch in me this thinking I was going to be on my own with these three kids um, flipped some kind of switch in me. And I'm really glad it did. I'm really glad it did. It really has, was the, what was a catalyst in uh, changing the trajectory of my life and in me becoming someone that I'm very proud of and someone that I love, someone that I respect. I, I, I love what I've done with my life since that. And it wouldn't have happened. I I would still be cooking dinners and cleaning and, you know, um, not that there's anything wrong with that. It just really wasn't what fulfilled me. Come to find out. I didn't know. I didn't know it about me. So, okay. Anyway, I just needed to set the stage that I was a wild animal, desperate claws out, frothing at the mouth, um, no college education, or that's not true. I didn't get my degree. And, uh, because I was having babies, and then, and dropped out of University of Illinois 
um, actually because of my eating disorder, but then to have kids and I never finished. So I didn't have any like job skills and I didn't really have any talents other than art and fitness. So, you know, there's not a lot of money in either of those things. And then one day I was on Facebook and I saw a post about something called the ultimate reset. And it was from a master trainer who had certified me. Well, actually, she was actually my boss. <laughs> I was at this point at, uh, it doesn't matter, but I was at, was it 24 Hour Fitness? It was 24 Hour Fitness. And she was the regional manager for 24 Hour Fitnesses. And she, I'm in Oregon and she lived in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And I love this woman to this day. I love her to death. Shout out to Kelly Amos, major mentor in my life. Um, and, uh, she posted about this ultimate reset. So anyway, I ended up, oh, and it was like something about a business opportunity. So I trusted her so much and love her so much that I reached out to her And meanwhile, I was trying to sell my art to make a living at this point in my life, trying to figure it out, trying to decide between art and fitness. And I was like, I'm just going all in with art. But then I saw that opportunity. So I signed up and I dove all in with both feet. And guess what? I was pretty successful. I mean, I wasn't in the top 1% of the company, but I was pretty successful as a beach body coach. And I enjoyed it as I was starting. And I was like, this is my life. Like God has given me a life raft. I am able to be home with my kids who are little still, and I can make money from home and it's helping people in fitness. And I started drinking Shakeology. And by the way, I, I, I love Shakeology. I've, I've had it every single day. I mean, literally ever since this is like, 12 or 14 years ago. I've had it every day. Um, I brought it, I bring it with me. Like I have Shakeology here with me in Puerto Vallarta. So I was really into, they have a lot of different supplements, recovery, pre-workout, you know, digestive boost, all kinds of things. And like, that was the supplement I was really into. I was not really into home workouts, truth be told because I love teaching classes. So I was not really into the whole like home workout thing, but I was like, okay, I got to do it to like make this business work. So I tried to do a little bit. I dabbled in the home workouts. I was never one of these like super, super dialed in committed to home workout people just because like I said, I taught too many classes for that. So, um, so I started making money and I built the team, you know, I built an organization. I had a lot of group fitness um, instructors that, uh, oh, I got a job as a manager in group exercise. So suddenly like God was opening doors in fitness for me. And so I had a lot of instructors that were like super also interested in some like little bit of extra side money in fitness, helping more people is super appealing to group fitness instructors. In fact, I'm sure many of you listening are Beachbody coaches. There's a ton of Beachbody coaches are group fitness instructors because it gave us another way to help people and another way to make money in an industry that doesn't really put food on the table easily, unless you're like a celebrity. So Um, I was pretty successful. Um, And then I'm going to tell you things kind of took a turn, not in terms of my success, but in terms of my mental health. (laughs) I started to become exhausted by the hustle I was putting in longest hours I've ever put it. I mean, I was just like, I was a slave to it. I became a slave to it. Um, my marriage was becoming more stable. Um, my husband has been sober now for nine years on Christmas Eve. I kicked him out of the house on Christmas Eve, almost nine years ago, changed the locks on the door and he went to treatment and became sober. 
So at this stage, his, he, our marriage was starting to become stable again. And I was starting to like lose my mental health because I was glued to my phone at the expense of my children. Like I was constantly obsessing over achieving the next rank, hitting what they would call success club, earning points, signing up and recruiting new coaches. There was all again, and I'm competitive and it's also part of the design, you know, it's like crack cocaine. And I always felt like I was on the precipice of that top 1%, you know? And so I, it's like crack cocaine, you know, like just feeling like insane wealth is so close to where I'm at. And so, but I just, I just couldn't put my phone down. I couldn't, I had no balance in my life. I was leading a team. I was leading team calls weekly. I was listening to their national wake up call weekly. I was running challenge groups monthly. I was, um, selling and recruiting constantly. And it started to take over. It started to shift and change the way I showed up in the world. Like if I went out to dinner, I was looking at the waitress, like maybe I could get in a conversation with her and she could join my team. (laughs) Or, you know, if I was at the gym talking to someone, I was like wanting them to buy Shakeology from me. I wanted to, I wanted to take the conversation there and that affects relationships like this was also the time oh my gosh I was so disgusted by it I was so disgusted by all the hey girl messages all the DMs and I can proudly say I was never like that I never wanted to be like that even though that's what all the like top coaches were kind of doing and being taught to do is to DM people like crazy about the opportunity. And I just, I was so turned off by that. And um, I think, and maybe this is another episode where I talk about my thoughts behind why Beachbody Live died. But I do think one of the reasons Beachbody Live died um, is because People associated Beachbody with, quote unquote, a pyramid scheme. And, you know, at trainings for certificate, like certifications, the people that were often coming were Beachbody coaches that had no, zero, uh, zero experience in teaching group fitness, which is fine. Like I'm for entry level certifications. I have some, (laughs) like you don't have to have ever taught before to take a warrior training, but it was like flooding the market Beachbody live. It was flooded with coaches. It was flood. So the majority of people at a training had never taught before were into their home workouts. Um, and so also all these coaches are just trying to sell their crap and get people to join their team. So imagine that going out into gyms everywhere. Imagine that going out into gyms everywhere, um, like people that didn't have a lot of skill or experience yet. I'm not saying they couldn't get there, but it does take time and it takes deeper education, like primary group fitness certifications and stuff. And so they also, they're like highly motivated to like sell their crap and get people to join their team. I don't mean crap. I love still, again, I don't mean crap when I say that, but sell their stuff and get people to join their team. So that's what was going out into gyms. And it was maybe poor quality and maybe a little icky. So I think that's one of the reasons Beachbody Live died. I have more theories about that, but again, maybe, maybe, maybe another episode. So I, at this point in my life, the opportunity to work at the DAC as the fitness manager. And if you've been listening to my episodes, I'm not going to go into it now, but if you know, sort of, if you've been listening and you're kind of caught up, you know, when I started at the DAC before I, before I, I wanted to make less of that role, 
I started with a big job, like running the entire like fitness department, including personal training, including um, small group team training and group exercise. So it was a major role at first. I was in charge of like ordering fitness equipment for the club. And, you know, it's a mega behemoth club. So the opportunity to take that job came to my life right then, right at this point where I was losing my mind, feeling like these coaches are being icky in everyone's DMs, um, feeling like it isn't a pyramid scheme, but but people have that association with it and feeling like a bad mom who is chronically ignoring her children to try to, you know, hit a new rank and telling myself this, I'm actually being a good mom because I really just want to make money so I can have more time with them and do more for them. And, you know, I was like constantly in that literally, I felt like I was running on a treadmill that was set at a speed that was too fast for me. And I was going to fall off the back. I just couldn't keep up and I'm dying and I'm running out of breath and I'm gasping and I can't. And I just kept sprinting and sprinting and sprinting. And finally one day, well, I had the, the opportunity for the DAC came up and I decided it's way less money. I was making six figures then at that time, beach body. I was like, okay, this DAC job is less money, but I can shut it down at five o'clock, which you can't really do with group fitness management. But anyway, (laughs) that's what I thought at the time. Um, But no, truly, it was like, it was like, oh, another life raft. God gave me another life raft. Which is ultimately going to be my message to you today. There was another life raft when I needed it. So I took it. I started. I I just, I decided, oh my gosh, I remember exactly where I was sitting and everything I was feeling. I felt like a failure. I also felt like the biggest weight of the world came off of my shoulders. I felt like I could for the, I was drowning. And for the first time I could actually open my mouth and breathe. Uh, And I also, like I said, felt tremendous guilt and like a sense of utter failure because I had a team. I built an organization. We were team play hard. We were like 700 coaches deep. And I was just going to walk away. I was just going to, I was literally done. Done. I remember where I was sitting in my kitchen and I, I don't remember how or what I said to my team, but I'm sure I let a lot of them down. I'm sure they were horrified and shocked and disappointed in me. Um, But the, the relief of stepping down, I don't mean stepping down. I kept my business center open. I kept my organization open. Of course, I had a lot of coaches and a lot of customers. Um, but I did, uh, I did decide to stop the hustle, to stop trying to recruit, to stop trying to sell and to just let my business slowly come undone. And That's what I've been doing these last few years. I've just slowly let my business, I guess it's been like maybe eight years since this time, I think. I don't know. Maybe seven. I don't know. I'm terrible at this chronology of all this whole story, but I just decided to let it go. And so I still continue to make residual income. I would still get big old 1099s at the end of the year. They of course, got smaller every year as my organization, you know, didn't have my leadership. And um, so of course it kind of started to become people quit and cancel and stuff like that. So it was shrinking gradually. Um, But yeah, I still continue to make money, which is why when I received the message yesterday, my second first feeling was gratitude because I was like, (sighs) I'm so grateful that, and now I believe in God. I'm so grateful that God redirected me in another direction when I decided to let go those years ago, six, seven, eight, 
years ago, something like that. I am so grateful. That was emotion. Number one is uh, thank God this isn't my only thing right now. And then emotion, you know, number two was um, disappointment because I was like, oh crap, (laughs) I'm going to lose money. (laughs) My 1099, I still like that 1099. Then, um, then, like I said, I felt then thirdly, deep compassion for those. So I'll talk about, I want to talk a little bit about that. Do you hear the jackhammers? They're going crazy right now. They must have been on a lunch break when I started this um, episode. So my third emotion was compassion. And I, I'm sure there's people listening to this podcast where their whole world was Team Beachbody coaching, their livelihood. In fact, there was like, a lot of popular rhetoric around the company, like retire your husband and women did. Um, They did a lot of female entrepreneurs, um, you know, um, retired their husbands and like, you know, bought million dollar houses in like Florida and Texas where there's, no state income tax, you know, they moved, husbands quit jobs and, you know, um, I, I, I'm, I'm sad for them. I'm sad for the fear and anxiety this must be causing, but, um, really my message to you is that there are First of all, God, and if you don't believe in God, then you can chalk it up to the universe, (laughs) but there's a master plan and life rafts come along and you'll be okay. You'll figure it out. You'll pivot. We're in fitness. That's what we do. We're resilient. We overcome things. We triumph over things. We get up when we got knocked, when we get knocked down, you know, I also think that if you are not in network marketing and are interested in getting involved in network marketing, my, my opinion is that you don't. I think that they don't last. They can't. They will implode at a certain point, again, 12 or 14 years into it, that there's this like allure, a carrot always dangled in front of your face and promise of wealth and financial freedom. And it's it's like a lie. It's deceptive because... Really only the founding people and the top 1% unicorns have that. And everyone else hopes for it and thinks it's coming. And, um, but ultimately I'm so grateful um, for Beachbody. And I meant to say this at the beginning of the episode, not the end, but um, I learned so much. Literally, I... Beachbody changed my life in the best ways. The company, um, I they gave me the opportunities of a lifetime. And the life I have today and love today is a, a, is a byproduct of my involvement um, with that company. And I learned, I learned how to do marketing. Like, I'm sure you I'm not sure. Maybe, (laughs) maybe you follow me. (laughs) I don't know if you do or not, but if you, if you do follow me, I'm like really good at marketing. I'm the marketing department for warrior. I'm it. I'm sales and marketing (laughs) and I love it. And I'm really good at it. And I learned that from my time coaching. I learned a lot of those skills, I should say. 
Um, I also through via Beachbody Live, you know, was given insane opportunities as a fitness professional to present on a conference stage to, you know, teach to large audiences. I've been on stage with Tony Horton. I've been on stage with Shalene Johnson. I was on stage with Shalene Johnson with 29,000 people in the crowd, you know? Um, and that was in Indianapolis. And with Tony Horton, it was in Portland at like one of their super Saturday events. And we had like, I think 1400 people in the crowd. Um, so I've, you know, rubbed shoulders with some celebrities um, which is fun. And then, you know, I've been on Beachbody on demand, um, and led instructor workouts for Beachbody live. I tested content for Beachbody live. I learned how to talk to a camera, which is really different skill set than, um, teaching a class. So, I mean, I got this full on education in presenting and speaking and just oper- an abundant, a, a, an abundant, abundance of opportunities because of that company. I, my nutrition, like I, I, Shakeology is still the cornerstone of my nutrition. That's how I start every single day. Oat milk, vegan Shakeology, half a banana, some uh, natural nut butter, collagen peptides and creatine and spinach. And that's my, that's how I start every single day. Like I set myself up and it's really just been like honest, truly, truly the cornerstone of my nutrition. I also not just the marketing and all those opportunities with Beachbody Live, but like some of the most meaningful relationships in my life are because of Beachbody. I met probably you, probably some of you, probably many of you, to be quite honest. And those relationships are just like truly, and and it's affected my business today. I wouldn't have this business today. I wouldn't know how to run this business. I wouldn't know what, don't forget, I didn't get a college degree. I learned how to run my business because of Beachbody. I am so grateful. So grateful. I would not go back and undo it for the world. Sorry about the jackhammers. (laughs) Maybe you can't hear them, but they are going crazy. So, yeah, a lot of PIO instructors uh, ended up finding me and now are teaching my format my warrior rhythm and a lot of insanity and P90X instructors found warrior strength and a lot of turbo and core to force instructors found warrior combat. And so I just, I'm so grateful. And I meant to say that in the beginning of this episode, um, that, um, and, and speaking of gratitude again, that was my very first emotion. When I heard the news, I was like, thank God, thank God. I redirected all my energies, uh, like away from each body and, and in, into like warrior and, and the life I have today, my family, again, my kids and having a life that is balanced. Um, so, uh, but I think having gratitude and I'm, I know that some of you are in the thick of this right now, but I think having gratitude is like, honestly, the best thing you can do in the situation, even if it feels impossible. Um, like what have you, how has beach body, if you're in it, made you better? What can you extrapolate from your time and experiences there that you can apply to your next great chapter and new beginning? So thank you for hanging out with me all this time in Puerto Vallarta. And um, I really appreciate your listening and your sharing and um, your interest in the education and information that I bring you. So have an awesome rest of your week. And you'll be hearing from me again next week on Monday. 
Thank you for joining in on the Confessions of a Group X Instructor podcast. If you're interested in becoming a Warrior Instructor, go to warriorinstructors.com. But if you want more and found this episode amazing, please give us a rating. And with a simple click to subscribe, we'll invite you back to our next episode. So remember, be brave, be bold, be blessed. And above all, listen, learn, love.